How do managers use body language more effectively? Yeah, well, I think one of the things that they can do for sure is make sure that they're giving off images that help people trust them. Uh, those would be things like, well, for example, you know, I'm talking to you now, but I have my head tilted to one side, showing you my ear, that shows that actually I'm listening to you. That should mean that you start to mirror me as you're doing, your head's tilted to one side, and so I'm actually causing you to listen to me more. I'm giving you the image of listening, and so you're listening more to me back. So that gives you a sense of, okay, you can trust me because I'm hearing you, although I just keep on talking. So, so there's a sense there of me kind of being a little bit manipulative, persuading and influencing you to listen to me more because I'm giving you the image that I'm listening to you. How can we use gestures, for example, when it comes to effective body language? Let me show you this. When I drop my hands down by my side, which is what most people will do when they're uh, talking to a, to, a, to a large audience, you can see how something in my persona, the, maybe the, the light in my eyes, the, the energy in my body has, has dropped. That's because when my hands go down by my side, I start to uh, take on less oxygen into my lungs. And I'm actually, I actually start to put myself and my audience who are mirroring me into quite a, a sleepy state. So one of the things you can do, well, you could do the opposite of that, which is actually to bring your hands up to the chest area. That's now increasing the amount of oxygen that's going into the blood. It's increasing the energy. And you're getting something which is a little more exciting now, a little more motivational. So hands at the chest can motivate people more. When they drop down by the sides, you can see how instantly the, the, the energy drops from me. So this is something where the audience reflects your energy level, reflects how you are talking to them. And if you're speaking slowly, your arms at the side, they will start energy levels dropping down as well. They just copy the leader, yeah? Your audience copy the leader. If you're up speaking, if they're sleeping, it's because you're sleeping. Yeah, if they're excited, it's because you're excited. If they're engaged, it's because you're engaged. If they're thinking in a certain way, it's because you're doing that. They will absolutely copy the way you're thinking and they know the way that you're thinking because of the way that your body is held. So you've got to give out really clear, strong images that help the audience copy you. Uh, here's another example. You know, if I start to talk to you now and I start to give lots of uh, gestures around my face, this gives you certain feelings about my content, maybe that I'm holding elements of it back. How do you now start to feel about giving me content, about talking to me, um, interacting with me when I have this kind of image with you. Say we're in a meeting together. Do you feel compelled to give me information when I look like I'm somebody who's holding elements of information back? What if I then start to open up with my gestures towards you? How much more compelled do you feel now to ask me questions or to offer me information? So you're saying at times that actually body language trumps the words that I'm actually saying. Oh, for sure. For sure it, it trumps it. The, the words, the linguistics, are the spaghetti sauce. Okay. The spaghetti is what's happening with the, with the body. Look, I can say to you, I can give you untrustworthy gestures and say, look, you, you know, Carl, you know that I can trust what I'm, you can trust what I've been telling you here. Um, now, now, what if I give you trustworthy body language and say, Look, you know, Carl, you know that you can trust what I've told you here. Yeah, once it what if I drop my hands down by my side and say, look, Carl, you know that, I can, you, that, that, that you can trust what I've told you here. The message is different depending on where it is. Look, you know that you can trust what I've told you here. Yeah. Yeah? The meaning is tending to come from the gesture, not necessarily the linguistics. And if you see a difference between the gesture and the linguistics, you will tend to go with what the body was saying. Yeah? So when I say, trust me, yeah? Or if I say, trust me, which one do you want to go with? Absolutely. 
So does this go back to, you know, we have the thinking rational mind, but we also have kind of more ancient part of our brain. Yeah. That, that was great when we were out hunting animals and things like that yeah, a great thousand for that. years ago, but still we still have that in, in our thinking. You can't get rid of it. Uh, the reptilian mind, the, uh, the R complex, probably about 500 million years old. Fish have it. Uh, you know, so if we take that evolutionary idea as being absolutely correct, we've still got that going on in our head. I can put on a suit and a tie, and it doesn't stop me having a reptile brain that will, again, trump any of this logical stuff if it gets put under pressure. Mm. So... If you start putting people under pressure, they're going to go for that reptile mind. Look, example would be, here's a, here's a great example of body language and the way we interact with the world. If somebody's working at a desk, for example, and you come in behind them, we have, that part of our mind knows to be wary of any shadows that come in from over the top. Because it comes from the days when we were reptiles and we were looking out for birds of prey. So if we see a shadow, we instantly go, uh-oh, problem, problem, problem. Could be an attack. So you come in as the, as the leader, as the manager, and you come in from behind me and cast a shadow, I'm instantly alerted that there could be a problem, there could be a problem. I'm most likely to do a lizard press gesture, which I would do here, something like this, where I start to puff out my chest, okay, and I start to look over my shoulder, and I instantly get this feeling of, all right, are you going to attack? What's happening here? I'm bigger than you think I am. Whatever you say now to me is just because I'm under attack. So you may as well just go away for 10 minutes, come back again, approach me from the front so I can see you coming, and then you haven't alerted my fight and flight system, which is part of this reptile brain. So the fight and flight is going to get me aroused, it's going to get me stressed for a, f a few moments, and that will pass. That will pass. I can overcome it, but it's going to take me a, few, a moment or two to cl calm down. Look, if we're having a conversation here, okay, and, and you, know, you say something that somehow sparks that aggressive system in me, I start getting aggressive and passionate up here, you start to copy me, suddenly, Carl, you, you, th you think, hang on, this is going to go nowhere, because now we're arguing. What you need to do is break the conversation and go, Mark, I'm just going to go away for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm sorry, I need to stop the conversation there. Let me come back and let's talk about this a bit later. You come back in 10 minutes, I will probably have forgotten what this was about. Yeah? Because I wasn't in control of those emotions. You said something, you did something, something happened that sparked that reptile off. You can't logically stop it. In fact, when you try and logically stop it and you go, uh, look, Mark, don't be angry, I just get more angry. Sometimes there's a bit of a parallel to obesity in the sense that uh, our bodies are going, eat fat, the winter's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And indeed in Canada, the winter comes. But the fact is the supermarkets have just as much food as always. And so our bodies are saying, keep eating which was great advice when winter came and there was right. less food, but today it's irrelevant, but we're still hardwired to go, fat, I should eat some of that. Right, because you've got that 500 million year old part of your brain which doesn't know that supermarkets exist. You know, it doesn't know that we wear suits and ties and that you're not really going to kill me. But I might see images that look like that, images that look like aggression. You know, you come and start to talk to me and you make your chest very big. Maybe you show me your throat area. Yeah, which is a signal of, I don't think you're going to attack me. You start showing me those kinds of gestures, I'm either likely to back off, and if I can't back off far enough, I'll have to come in and attack. If I fail at the attack, I'll faint or take a sick day. Yeah, I'll find some way out of that. So, Mark, what you're saying is that what we're thinking, when we communicate that, we want to make sure our body language and what we're saying is absolutely in sync. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, example would be, if I'm going to tell you, you know, Carl, it's been great. I, I love having this interview with you. It's fascinating talking with you about this. My body language has got to be in sync. There's no point in me dropping those hands, going into this downward intonation that comes with hands dropped in the low energy and, and saying to you, Carl, it's been, you know, fascinating uh, talking to you uh, about this. We should really do this, you know, again sometime. Do men and women use body language in a different manner? We all pretty much actually have the same body language. There's some body language that women might use more than men on average. But on average, what I'm interested in is what's the body language that we all use a great deal of time? What's the archetypes? 
what's the fundamentals that we're communicating? Because that, for me, will cut through to really clear communication. Oh.